Hey there, welcome to episode 54 of Money Never Sleeps, a podcast that looks inside the head of entrepreneurs and at what makes them do what they do. I'm Pete Townsend, your co-host of Money Never Sleeps, along with Owen Fitzgerald. This episode of Money Never Sleeps is kindly sponsored by Ireland's fintech and financial services recruitment specialist, Top Tier Recruitment. If you or a colleague need help attracting and retaining great talent for your fintech or financial services company, we highly recommend you have a chat with a team at Top Tier Recruitment as they really know their stuff. You can find them at toptierrecruitment.com and tell them we sent you. In this episode, we pulled together a bunch of sound bites from six startup founders who were our guests earlier this year, with each snippet having the theme of making hard decisions. Don't let the beanbag brigade fool you, folks. If you're thinking about launching a startup, it's no cakewalk. Making hard decisions every single day is something that no one can prepare you for, and you just have to live through it. You think I'm ripping off Ben Horowitz and the hard thing about hard things? I most certainly am. That book had a huge influence on both Owen and me. We'll kick it off with Stefan Euger from Four Securitas, who featured on episode 33 of Money Never Sleeps. The last time you and I spoke in detail about what you were up to, yeah. um, you were telling me about some of the clients that you were starting to bring on board and those uh, and your overall go-to-market strategy, right? Tell us some of the things that have worked and some of the things that might not have worked so well in terms of putting your product into the hands of corporate customers. Uh, penetrating the market is really hard. Okay. It's one of the most challenging, and that's probably uh, that's one of the first things that I underestimated when I started the startup. I had no issues about my product. I'm totally confident, determined, 100%. I know what it does. I know it does something useful. But I underestimated the market challenge. That's what I like, I think. Uh, that's uh, Your next question probably is going to be one of us, I know. Um, it's very hard because we are using the exact same words that other vendors are using. Yeah. So they will all tell you what's new. If I tell them what's new, I have to go into specific and have to be very technical. Yeah. And when I'm very technical, it's very difficult that the person in the front of you would understand what you're talking about. It's hard to do. And then you will get easily dismissed. Okay, that's the most challenging thing. But we're getting there. I'm learning also the market terms, <laughs> strategies to talk, you know, to translate that technicality, use less technical language and more communication, more, you know. <laughs> well, uh, the most difficult thing in order to start a tech, tech company, when you're starting to build a tech company, the most challenging thing is actually is finding the right skills mm -hmm. to build what, you're, what you want. I, I had no problem from that perspective. I knew already who to pick, where to pick, how and when. Mm -hmm. I had to just decide the date, say. And the guys, they were like, readily. So I had all skills identified already. And I was lucky from that perspective. Uh, and it's a team player. It's not only me. Yeah. I, I, would, I would go nowhere alone. Nowhere. Absolutely zero. Nowhere. In fact, I, I rely on 100% on all of my guys from the most junior to the top senior. Now, on to Andrew Patrick White, founder of FundApps, who was on episode 35. Yeah, and it seems like the, you know, there's a combination of a sardonic wit and this hidden <laughs> optimism in you, Andrew, that just, just always comes out. And just that hidden optimism, um, you know, how do, how do you keep that going? And how, does, how do you keep that fuel, that fire alive? <laughs> I, I, yeah, you should probably bottle it and, and sell it on, on TechCrunch or something. Yeah, it, it is. It is. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of articles really about grit and tenacity, and I do feel that is probably one of the top two or three traits that you require as an entrepreneur. You know, many things, as I think, not taking life too seriously. For me personally, travel has been great for that. I've been left on the side of a road at 4 a.m. in Cambodia with, with no sign of light, and you just pick up your backpack and walk. So, you know, when you get into a warm office with coffee, nothing seems that difficult anymore. So that there is is a definite kind of not taking it all like a lot of people do too seriously or getting stressed about it and that comes from you know knowing also you what you've built is good i think that's important as well as be proud of what you've done a lot of people just want to fling something out the door and make some money so uh, knowing what you've you've done is is is, is valuable to the industry because you've been there before and then pushing through but yeah humor and, and a kind of 
you know, kind of very, I won't call it fatalistic, but kind of optimistic fatalism that, you know, whatever will be, will be. You, you can do your best to, to influence things, give it your best shot. But at the end of the day, it, life's short. So you can always move on. Don't worry about it too much. Back back that track up, back to uh, <laughs> back, back to Cambodia. What, what happened yeah. there? Uh, so bus, bus broke down about uh, 10 kilometers outside of Siakneville. Uh, there was only a few of us on the bus, so we basically, you know, put our backpacks on and, and hiked along the road for about an hour, an hour and a half. And, you know, as usual, the sunrise came up and somebody offered you a coffee about half an hour in. And actually, you're having the time of your life after half an hour, which is also a real kind of, you know, thing to think about life that you think is going to be terrible. And actually, it turns out to be very pleasant. So. Next up is Jen Horahan, founder of Othello who actually did quote Ben Horowitz and may not have even known it on episode 36. I suppose from a personality trait point of view, how have you found uh, building your own business over the last uh, period of time? Huge learning curve because I think, um, you know, professional services are... um, there's more of a there's more of a playbook there, and rightly so. And I think there isn't a founder out there that won't admit to the reality that, you know, when you are starting out your own company and you're taking on responsibility to, you've decided that you're going to do something of value, um, and you want to follow through with it in a certain way, and you're bring you're taking that responsibility on board. Um, there's no there's no set playbook uh, for any one company or founder. Um, and yet the goals and the objectives you're trying to achieve are, can be quite lofty at the beginning. So um, I'd say you you build up a certain level of resilience for dealing with, with new things on a daily basis. Um, and uh, it's, a, it, it's, a, it's a big learning curve, you know, at the very beginning. And I think the first... They, they say about everything, you know, your first year living in London is going to be more difficult to settle in. And your first, I think your first year as, as a founder, you're taking on investment and, and you're proving out your, your product. Um, that's where the, that's where the real challenges lie in terms of resilience and, and sticking through that first year. Now on to Graham Rodford from Archax, who was on episode 37. He had a bit of a different perspective than most founders, but it's still early days for him. You know, you've said that this so far, you know, that the the life of the entrepreneur hasn't been that much different in terms of um, the challenges in front of you. But I know that there there have been some hard things and hard decisions that you've that you've made. You may want to just share one of those in terms of um, you know how that went down. Uh, yeah, I, well, I guess. Um... You know, I guess. I mean, to be honest with you, there's not uh, there's not much in my life I I find difficult in making a decision. But I guess if there had to be one, it was kind of um, it was kind of the one to to jump ship from the last job to join here. Um, you know, rel- doing relatively well, earning decent money, had a good job, enjoyed the people I worked with. Um, um, you know, but I had a wife and three kids at home. But as, as I said before, I've kind of always been entrepreneurial, and I think my wife my wife understands that. <laughs> uh, and I, you know, after a while of talking about it, she, uh, she just said to me, "Look, will you just stop talking about it and just do it if you want to do it." And so yeah. the next morning, I think my my notice was in. So it was a hard decision. Is it? It's something I, you know, thought about. But you know, really, if I'm honest, the decision was probably already made, and I was just testing the water. It's, um, you know, I had, I had a good conversation at one point with, um, with um, the the I won't name him, but someone at my at my last hedge fund, and I remember going to work one day and we went out for lunch, and he kind of said to me, "Look, I had a conversation with my wife last night about how we're on life's conveyor belt, where you have kids, and you, you know, or you get uni, then you get married, you have kids, you get a job, you do better, you retire." He's like, "Don't you just want to be off that conveyor belt?" And what struck me as amusing about that conversation is I had had exactly the same conversation about my wife a few weeks before. And I remember saying to her at the time, like, I don't want to be the guy that talks about this being a problem and, and then never does anything about it. So it was almost at that point when I just said to myself, right, that's it. The next idea, the next idea I'm just going to go and do. So the second that we had the concept of doing this, I'd pretty much, um, you know, mentally committed to it anyway. You know, I say it was a hard decision because I just think, you know, when you've got a wife and kids, you know, you <laughs> you do have some responsibilities you need to think through. Um, but, um, you know, and it, and it is a big step to step into this. I think you had... Um, 
on one of your earlier episodes, I think um, Chris Chris uh, Maddles back, and he was talking about you know he asked people why someone should be an entrepreneur, and he always says he kind of tries to convince them it's one of the hardest things ever, and you know you do need to take all of those things into account, but. But I guess for me, where I felt it was slightly different is the last, the you know, when you're going through that process, I'm thinking, well, I get to see more of my children. There'll be less stress. I'll enjoy it more. So actually, for me, most of the moves over were pretty positive. Next up is Andrea Reynolds, founder of Swoop, who was on episode 41 of Money Never Sleeps. And you talked about the learning, I suppose, over that first year when you were looking to start it. What I suppose, what different learnings have you had now in the last year when things have been on an upward trajectory? Yes. Uh, building a team, building a team and how to be a good leader. So it's all very well when you're on your own and then you, you have a co-founder and you have this uh, sort of your, your little group, tight knit group. And then you're scaling fast. So you've to start hiring fast. And I think that for me, managing that growth of people and and trying to instill in them the passion that we all feel. And for me, it would just kill me if, if we had somebody who joined our platform and didn't feel that they got value out of it and that they had someone on the other end of the phone that was intelligent, uh, that wasn't just reading a script and trying to push them through the sausage machine. I was looking for, so all of our team are really uh, well, exp- have great experience in, so they're either ex-equity analysts or underwriters or financial advisors. So I want to marry the technology with an empathetic, smart team and trying to find that, uh, you know, it's really hard. So that for me, I think has been the challenge that I thought, well, yeah, I'll just recruit people. people, And and then you realize recruiting people who have the same philosophy, same empathy for businesses that I do has been challenging. And, and and then motivating them when you're not there uh, all of the time. I think that's been the most the most challenging. And I had to fire someone. That was the worst thing I've ever had to do. <laughs> did, it, did it take a long time? It, it took me about uh, Founders Forum is where I would say I love my Founders Forum group. Um, we each bring our challenges uh, to the table and that is just the most phenomenal program that Enterprise Ireland has created and it, it, it's just world class. So I brought my challenge of, I know I have to fire this person. I don't want to. I've never fired anyone in my, in my life. Um, and they really talked me uh, through the process and, and and also they're saying you have to report back on the WhatsApp group. <laughs> so so I, was, I have no choice. I've got to go do it. And yeah. then you do it and you realise actually... That, that person, I've probably done them a favor. We weren't the right fit for them as, as much as they weren't the right fit for us. So, yeah. Finally, we close with Sean Fawnen, the CEO of Project Salmon, who was on episode 42. And he dropped some knowledge on us, so listen up. Again, I, the really important thing to emphasize here is that, you know, and it's one of the things I think can be a little bit worrying when you focus on the entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Um, there is no entrepreneur. There's a team. Yeah. Right. And we could not be where we are without the team. I'm, I'm good at some things. I'm terrible at other things. And I think the secret is to you know, be confident enough about what you think you can do. And I think I'm pretty good at strategy and I think I'm pretty good at vision and stuff like that. Um, and I'm pretty decent with numbers, but I don't have huge operational experience. Mm-hmm. I've not worked, I've analyzed big techs, but I've not worked in the middle of them. I've not worked in a retail bank. So we have people inside who've worked in big tech, who've worked within banks, people who've had experience of setting up their own companies, some of which have worked, some of which they have felt. And I think, you know, if there's any secret source to what we're doing, it is that accumulation of experience and expertise of which I'm only a small part. Yeah. And that's an interesting view because we have like a lot of the founders we talk to, you know, their their kind of first challenge is giving over some of their baby, you know, because they've built it, whereby actually, you know, approaching it from a point of view that you recognizing what you don't know and bringing in those people as early as possible, you know, make, it's, a, it's a whole different approach to it in that sense. Yeah, and I think partly it becomes, again, 
you know, when, when you're a bit older and, and you've done a lot of things, I don't feel I need to prove myself. Yeah. Right. I desperately want this to work, but, you know, not so I can go around pounding my chest just because I think it's a really cool idea and a whole bunch of people have put a lot of time in. But for me, the goal is twofold. One is the outcome. Mm-hmm. Um, and the second is to make sure that as we're working to that outcome, we're having some fun, yeah. right? Yeah. It's one of, the things, one of the things I've learned, you know, particularly, you know, you know, the most precious thing actually is, is time, particularly personal time. And if you're giving up all this time for everything you do, there's something you haven't done. For every hour you spend on the business, and I know you know this, both of you, because you've got families, that's an hour you haven't spent with your family. Yeah. So it's not enough to say I'm, I'm planning for the big payout or the big delivery in three, four, five years from now. Again, going back to the previous thing, what we're saying is if you're not enjoying it now, yeah. chances are it's not going to work. And if the people you're working with are not enjoying it, chances are they're not going to stick around. That wraps it up, folks. Thanks to Stefan, Andrew, Jennifer, Graham, Andrea, and Sean for speaking the truth. Contacts for all of them are in the show notes for each episode on moneyneversleeps.ie. So check us out online and get in touch. If you want to get involved with the show, drop us a line on info at moneyneversleeps.ie or DM us on Twitter at MNS Show. We're on all the major podcast platforms. Remember, Money Never Sleeps is spelled as all one word. As for me, I increase the odds of startup success. DM me on Twitter at Pete Townsend NV if you want to know more. You can follow Owen on Twitter at Owen Fitzgerald9. Finally, thanks to Conan Brophy from Create Sound for recording and editing this podcast. Till next time, thanks for listening. See ya. Money Never Sleeps, pal.